What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So this will be the spoiler free review for Hulu, David Bruckner's Hellraiser movie that's releasing later this week. I saw the movie uh, this past Saturday night. Those of you who know who follow me on Twitter, you already know that. So just to jump on into the review, this is again directed by David Bruckner. It's being pinned by um, Ben Collins and Luke Piotrowski. And it's starring Odessa Zion, Jamie Clayton, Adam Faison, Drew Starkey, Brandon Flynn, um, I off hens, Jason Lyles and some other people. So just to jump into the synopsis, it says a young woman struggling with addiction comes into possession of an ancient puzzle box, unaware that its purpose is to summon the Cenobites, a group of sadistic supernatural beings from another dimension. Now, I do want to say that Hellraiser 2022 was a solid effort at reviving this franchise so unlike things that we know we saw if you watch my jeepers creepers reborn in four videos or just my videos about that series in general unlike what we saw with jeepers creepers reborn hellraiser at least shows that it's aware and respects what came before but wants to do its own thing at the same time to breathe new life into this franchise by just still working with the dna of the series and i will say there's no need to see the other movies unless you want to catch on to any references to past entries while watching this one as i was watching the film though i found myself constantly going this movie is so well shot and visually stunning but what is the problem here well for one it's only noteworthy character i would say is riley our drug addicted protagonist that is wonderfully portrayed by odessa the characters around riley are completely thin and they exist for nothing more than to just demonstrate this new mythology bruckner establishes bruckler and the writers help establish with this new iteration like that's really what i feel they only existed for you learn very little about them um uh, so that they're not very compelling as as composed to Riley and one other character who I wish we dug a little bit further into that I'll get into. That will make more sense though one, once you guys see the movie. But even Riley herself feels pretty one note as well. I will say that what was nice about this screenplay was how it created a set of rules this time around the around the Lambic configuration which ultimately leads to the Cenobites fulfilling your desires and how, the, how you actually go about getting to that point any kinkiness you might be hoping for will be found in a couple of sex scenes but maybe if you're into clayton's distorted voice that might be enough for you uh her, her delivery and her voice in this movie is very haunting there's also this millionaire character i want to talk about named void who is addicted to pleasuring himself not in a sexual way but materialistically despite having something that most people will never have millions of dollars so while riley's addicted to drugs or trying to overcome drug addiction Voight is addicted to having a new source of pleasure or discovering a new source of pleasure because he's never fulfilled despite having what you would say he has everything you as the viewer will think he has everything so again he's addicted to that and both of them kind of help provide weight under this allegory that examines our cost of addiction that basically is this movie the nature of humanity i would say is also examined pretty well here it's just a shame that the characters are lackluster which takes away from the themes explored but i again will say that if you're someone who uh who enjoys like explorations and meditations on mental illness or again having this movie just basically be an allegory for our our cost of addiction or the cost that can come from addiction you'll you'll find something to enjoy with the narrative despite the characters probably being too thin to really grow invested into their survival or lack thereof uh, I'm not going to say Riley doesn't have a strong art because she does. She's a recovering addict that again learns that her behaviors can cost her if she doesn't clean up for good. Odessa is given an emotional display that makes it easy to root for the character during her struggles. All the performances I would say are solid, but Clayton is specifically the one I, I would say is eating up the scenery. She again is both haunting and slightly, she might find her slightly seductive as your new pinhead. She's not trying to be Doug Bradley, but re retains some mannerisms you might expect to see from the OG while still bringing her own spin to the character. The sound design adds to the unease when body parts start ripping, flesh begins to be peeled back and more of that type of stuff. The first act might feel like a bit of a chore to sit through for some, but once you're into the second act, the Cenobites arrive to save any kind of boredom you might feel early on. The design of the Cenobites are impeccable as well. Every disgusting detail is impressive and along with this structure that a great chunk of this narrative takes place in as well. This was giving to me like 13 Ghost Vibes from 2001 with Pinhead Lord in the mix. So take from that what you will. <laughs> I'm still in awe of the score that was featured in the movie as well. 
which almost kind of beckons you in a way to keep on looking. Uh, the movie doesn't let up during its finale for sure. It's just the journey isn't without its rocky moments. If you want to compare visuals, I'll say Hellraiser 2022 beats the original, but doesn't have the more compelling narrative to be deemed better than the original. And that's OK, because after so many previous letdowns, this was an effective reimagining reboot slash reboot that may have opened the door to more entries down the road. Uh, the original still has the best haunting imagery. This one will have some things that make you cringe and wince. But again, the original, of course, is still at the top. I would place this next to Hellbound. Uh, so this would be number three for me. David Bruckner is one of the best directors today. And this was another example of that. But I am going to say that I do prefer The Ritual and The Night House as opposed to this. It just could have... I just think that um, this movie could have used its time better, perhaps to buff up the characters, especially Voight, who is pretty important to the story. Uh, but again, maybe upon a second viewing, I'll bump up my score. I can't deny that this film has compelling characters is, or it, that it is compelling. I'm going to say it respects what Hellraiser is as far as the series and it respects the character of Pinhead. Has great practical effects. It has a stellar lead performance as well from Odessa and a chilling portrayal of the of the pinhead character from clayton it has satisfying new lore additions and it has an adequate screenplay and it's just a visual feast those positives just aren't consistent when the movie plays out it's kind of like off and on being this this well shot movie with all those strong components then these poor ones kind of hamper it down or bring it down because the script isn't flawless plus it does begin to drag a bit Right now, I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. I am a fan of this new iteration, and I hope all of you will enjoy it when it releases on Hulu later this week. Uh, again, I'm placing it at number three as far as like where I'm ranking it in my Hellraiser ranking. Uh, I do want to look at it again because I feel as though I'll either bump it up to a seven or I'll be content with what I'm giving it right now. The characters are just way too thin for me to really get too attached to the characters, but the story and everything around them was very compelling. Let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notification so that you never miss a video. In the description, I will have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.